Schools closed, restaurants restricted, sports and entertainment left in limbo. Concern over COVID-19 alters the way Americans live their lives, at least for now. And joining us tonight to help make sense of all the rapid changes, Dr. Randall Bell. He's a renowned economist known as the doctor of disaster. Also here tonight, Dr. Manisha Badurian. She's a psychologist specializing in coping with anxiety. Welcome to you both. Dr. Bell, to you first. You've consulted on the economic impacts of a number of events from Hurricane Katrina to the fallout from 9-11. What's your take on where we are now and I think more importantly where we're headed in the near term? Well, Mike, I've been studying disasters since 1986, and normally a disaster is confined to kind of a regional area. When I worked on the 9-11, the World Trade Center, or the Fly 93 crash site, Hurricane Katrina, those were big disasters, but they affected a certain zone. This is unprecedented because we're going into international territory. What scares me more than the coronavirus is the reaction to it, the hysteria from it. But it is what it is, and we've got to press, press through it. Well, Dr. Badurian, it seems like, you know, we see the, the video of Sky 5 over at Costco's in different parts of, of L.A. County and the panic buying um, over the weekend. And uh, can you explain to us a little bit about the psychology of this doomsday scenario that we're going through and, and how this is, you know, that the most contagious thing seems to be fear right now? Absolutely. I think things are changing so rapidly and there are still so many things unknown. It feeds the anxiety. That's how anxiety works. It's it feeds off of uncertainty. But we're also seeing people are getting frustrated. They're becoming restless and fatigued. They're having a hard time resting, letting go, and sleeping well. And it's changing a lot of the family lives. As you guys said, schools are closed, people are working from home, and they're having a hard time working from home when their kids are needing their attention. So a lot has changed in people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Dr. Bell, the sports and entertainment industry shut down, <laughs> bars, restaurants, nightclubs shut down. Uh, this most certainly will have an impact on the economy. How great of an impact? Are we headed for a recession? Are we there? Well, I, I, the recession, it looks like we're getting very close if we're not already there. The thing is, is that when you shut down Disneyland, it affects not just the hospitality in, in, in interests, the restaurants. That affects real people who are living paycheck to paycheck, and it ripples out throughout Orange County, L.A., and, and throughout the whole region. So it, it's a, it, 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 we're talking about a trillion-dollar-plus disaster here, not measured in the billions. So we're, I mean, and with that kind of trillion-dollar disaster, of course, Dr., but during that's going to bring even more anxiety to people. People watching the stock market, uh, you know, are, 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 are freaking out, panic selling. And, you know, what kind of advice do you give for people not only coping with that kind of anxiety when it comes to the stock market, but also the anxiety of, you know, this global pandemic that we're all experiencing together, watching countries close their borders and the lines. And I mean, you, you know, you, you're just talking about it. You know, even I'm getting anxious. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a real thing. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of fear around job insecurities or financial problems and we do go from living mindset to a survival mode now but we want people to remember that they've been through tough times before and we have coping skills to manage it so we really want them to focus on their daily routines and try not to make too much changes still get up in the morning even if you're not leaving your house change your clothes and go through some sort of a routine so that it's there's no lack of structure Mm. Well, Dr. Bell, you, you look at historical perspective, and I think it helps in times like this to understand, as you mentioned, weathering the storm. Is there, is there opportunity here? Well, there's tremendous opportunity. I mean, my dad used to always say, buy low, sell high, and there's a lot of opportunities to buy low. There's a whole army of people that come in in the aftermath of disasters and buy low. My recommendation is don't, don't sell unless you really need to. Things will rebound. We're not that far away from things, you know, getting a little bit better. And once we kind of turn the corner, this is not the end of the world. That's, that's the main thing. I've seen disasters all over the world. I've been to all seven continents looking at disasters. This is not the end of the world. It's, it's stressful for everybody. But there's going to be an end to it. It's just a matter of time. So when, when President Trump at the press conference today says, you know, there's going to be a tremendous surge, you know, uh, once this is all over and, and giving, you know, months of August or July that this could be, uh, I mean, what do you say about that? Yeah, I, I don't know if there's going to be a tremendous surge 
surge, but there will be a recovery. It may be, actually be very gradual, but or it may be a surge. We, we, I don't have a crystal ball, right. but it, there will be a recovery. All disasters, there's ultimately a recovery. It's just a matter of time uh, before we see it. Yeah, and, and you have to figure at some point the, the irrational reaction to what we're seeing will abate. Well, yeah, I mean, nobody's uh, stopped making toilet paper. They're still manufacturing it. The shelves will be restocked. It's just a matter of time before the knuckleheads that are hoarding and panic buying knock it off and, and, and be a little kinder to their community. I would really recommend to people, this is really your department, but I would recommend to people, look back a few months from now and say, did I act like a, uh, like a good citizen? Did I act like a good neighbor? And was I good to the community? Or was I one of the knuckleheads? Because that's a question where I'll have to look back a few months from now an answer, and I, I hope we kind of see uh, better behavior. The problem is, is mm. that you find that there are um, a lot of people that uh, are not uh, showing symptoms mm -hmm. and um, are continuing life as if it's, you know, not, that there isn't a pandemic, a global pandemic out there. Um, they're still coming to work or they're still going out to, you know, in, uh, we saw a video of people in the West Hollywood area still uh, going out on Friday and Saturday and Sunday having brunch. Um, you know, and, and then you come to work on Monday knowing and hearing about these people's weekend that didn't uh, self-contain themselves or isolate themselves or social distanced, you know. I mean, what do you say that to, to those people that still are at work and have had coworkers or whatever it might be because, you know, going out and about? I, I mean, that causes anxiety as well. Absolutely, and there are a couple things here because we want to make sure people follow the CDC guidelines, but we also don't want to go above and beyond because extremes does feed the anxiety. Mm -hmm. And there's a fine line between feeding the fear and the anxiety and doing the smart thing for our global community. So we really want people to follow the CDC guidelines, but also... We don't want social distancing to become social disconnection. Correct. We want people to reach out. We want people to maybe FaceTime more. There's a lot of virtual resources. Mental health therapists are now doing online therapy. So there's a lot of way to stay connected so we come out of it stronger. Important distinction. Doctors Manurian and Bell, many thanks for coming in. Thank you for your time and your insights.